Great. Well, I can see it on the Anki Connect portal too. Um, just a quick introduction before we get started on this 30 minutes uh, segment. My name is Jeremy Patoka. I've been involved in the Acumatica ecosphere for about 10 years now. And um, one of the things that I do is uh, run a company that does optimization for Acumatica end users. And we do that through partners. So uh, it's a we have a partner program for that. Um, so that's given us a lot of context into um, working with folks post go live. Um, we've really been committed to this optimization service over the past year. So I, I've got this whole new um, view of uh, working with clients that have been live for a little bit, um, but that really want to lean in more and optimize the system. So what I've done for today is really just brought kind of what we've learned over the last year, and I hope to share some basics about optimization with everyone joining today, as well as uh, some tips and tricks that I've learned, and, and then jump into some actual features inside of a live Acumatic instance, just so we can poke around and we can look at together and, uh, and, and really share some of what we've learned. Um, it's only a, a 30 minute session, so it'll be pretty high level but I hope everyone can just take away one or two quick things that you're gonna to learn today that, um, that you can apply in the next week. Um, I used to be an eighth grade teacher, so I love presenting concepts and ideas to people, and I love it even more when they do something with it. So I hope that you can just jot down one or two things if you are an Acumatica end user or partner and really apply what you're gonna learn um, in the next week or two. That would be, that would be a really valuable way to use this next 30 minutes is, is kind of finding a couple of things that be tangible and practical for you. So first things first, why is optimization important? Number two, what are the ground rules for optimization? And then number three, what are the top five ways to optimize your Acumatica environment? So we're gonna jump into all of that here in the next couple of, uh, uh, in the next 25 minutes. So disclaimer, this is a pet peeve of mine. Don't do this. Uh, don't leave the Acumatica landing page as your user's homepage three years after go live. Um, this is a big reason for why when I log in to an existing Acumatica client site, I can see we probably have some, some heavy lifting optimization to do here. Um, without getting too philosophical, Right, if we look at the way that as a whole ERP is implemented, um, 20 years ago, we bought a license, a server, or rented somebody else's server, and then we, maybe 15 years ago, right, we would put that on, uh, we'd, we'd buy an application, have a project, and then go live, right? Um, the speed at which cloud technology is hitting us all, right, new integrations, new features, um, AI, every six to 12 months now, even in a perfect world, if you did achieve everything you wanted in your initial project, there's still a lot of optimization that you you need to do just to keep up with, a, with, with what's coming at you as far as new features that you could leverage to make your business more efficient, right? So uh, this is one of those things. It's just a pet peeve of mine. If you log in, you see Acumatica's landing page, right? This is pretty for like a new user that's just jumping into Acumatica. But for someone that's been live for three years, you should be seeing a dashboard. You should be seeing some KPIs that are relevant for you. Or at a very minimum, you should be kind of shortcutting to a screen that you're going to start your work on, um, not landing on kind of the template. So if, if this is your experience when you log into Acumatica, uh, I would encourage you to, to pick something else for your homepage or build a quick dashboard that's going to give you quicker access to do your work in a day. So that's my lead into why is optimization an important task to do? And optimization is really important to do because um, we all buy and subscribe to these ERP systems, Acumatic is the one we're talking about today, to be able to make our business more efficient, right? Involve all the users of the business in the, that, that maybe are in silos and different areas, uh, spreadsheets, get everybody into Acumatica. Um, that never happens in an initial go live. It's not the client's fault. It's not the implementer's fault. It's just reality, right? At some point, we all have to rip the Band-Aid off and go live. So optimization and really committing to have an, an internal optimization project 
is going to allow you to fully leverage the ERP system and just continue to grow into what you're already paying for, right? Um, the other thing is that you're going to be able to implement additional modules and features better and faster. So in Acumatica, every time you kind of fill out another area, it makes uh, something else that much easier, right? There's so many examples of that across the different modules. Like once you learn how to use recurrent transactions in AR or GL, you can use recurrent transactions everywhere. Um, and that can, it's a big time saver for people. Um, also, you're improving customer and end user satisfaction. So, you know, what you're trying to do through this is make users like Acumatica more, right? Because then they want to be in the system. They don't want to be offline then saying, well, my spreadsheet's easier to do my work, right? If you're optimizing Acumatica continually, you're going to wind up having people um, excited might be an overstatement, but just more uh, willing to do their work inside of the system. And then the last thing is, you know, the more that you lean into technology in any area of your business, not just ERP, you're going to be able to reduce overhead as you scale your company or you scale your business. So here's my ground rules before we jump into the top five reasons. Here's my ground rules or my prerequisites for optimization. Uh, and then we're going to get into the five. Number one, start with your post go live list. Okay. Everyone has, if I, I've been a part of many ERP implementations, what we wind up doing is we wind up putting this big list together kind of at the bottom of the Microsoft project, Smartsheet, Monday, Asana, whatever tool you use to manage your Acumatic implementation. Okay. Um, that's my number one tip is start with that post go live list, figure out. Do we still need to do some of this? Sometimes I find there's things on that list. It's like that was relevant when so-and-so was here or when we were using our old system. But now that we're in uh, Acumatica and we've been live for three months, let's actually wind up uh, just getting rid of this one, adding a few things. Okay. If you don't have that list for some reason, or let's say you've come into your organization two years after the company went live on Acumatica, Spend a little time conducting user interviews by department. This has been the number one thing for me that has been validating on why we have to optimize Acumatica. We wind up doing these user interviews across like all the different teams. Finance, operations, and IT are usually the core three, right? There might be some sub teams under that. And we're, we're just asking folks, hey, um, what, do you, what do you like about how the system works? What do you not like? And, and it, it, we just get some really tangible things out of those interviews. Um, it's not meant to be like big brother, like, hey, let me stand behind you at the warehouse um, dock and, and watch you receive a purchase order. It's supposed to just be more conversational. And people like to just show you things like, hey, here's how I do it. There might be a better way. And that's revealed some really great, really great features or just retraining that needs to happen. Um, the next one would be, Build a master plan for this, right? If you are going to treat an optimization of Acumatica just like a task that is on your desk, then it will probably fail. And you need to include other people in that. So like when we've run this, we actually have, we treat it like an implementation project, right? There's dates, quarterly goals, and then like basically treat it like a year optimization. Here's what we're committing to do as an organization to lean into Acumatica further. Um, that's been a really helpful tool for us. And, and if you think of it like a project, you even wind up doing stuff like, hey, we're going to have a stand up every other week or once a month, whatever the cadence is for the amount of optimization work that you need to do. And then the last thing that I would say is see if there are any other offline processes. When folks initially buy Acumatica, they buy it for a couple of reasons, but there's usually other things that are happening that maybe weren't at the top of the priority list. Like maybe the field service team is using a separate route management tool that's like disconnected from everything. Maybe the sales team wasn't involved in the first ERP evaluation. And now it's like, hey, uh, we'd love to have more integrated solutions and get out of uh, spreadsheets and Outlook for CRM, basically. So those are all um, great prerequisites just to understand what we're optimizing, why we're optimizing it. And then, and then like I said, building that plan. So uh, the, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to jump into the top five ways that I believe uh, are oftentimes low-hanging fruit 
to be able to optimize your Acumatica environment. So I have just a demo environment. I'm gonna slide over onto my main screen that everyone should be able to see. This is just the standard Acumatica sales demo data for those of you that are familiar with it, specifically the, the partner representatives on the call. Um, I mentioned, you know, the, the number one reason why I know people need to optimize Acumatica is I log in and I see the Acumatica landing page. Uh, even if it's a very simple dashboard, just have something there, right? My company also uses Acumatica. So I log in and I like to be able to see what's the AR, like what vendors we have to pay this week, right? As kind of the person that runs that CFO role for our company, those are important things that I really want to know. I don't want to have to log in, see a landing page, and then go run a report to do that. That's not the intent of the platform. And, and you're totally underutilizing the system if that's a scenario that you're in. Acumatica has five native reporting tools out of the box, okay? Dashboards is a very simple one that you can set up without any programming experience. There's lots of like video tutorials. There's some template sample dashboard that you can plug in and, and just tweak. Uh, you could ask your partner to help you with dashboards, right? Um, but this is a very, uh, it's, a, it's a very visual thing that people like to be able to see when they're like, they get excited about demos when they buy the system. But I, I don't see it realized enough when people are live. And that's why this one's number one on the list for me. Um, these dashboards are all drillable. So that's the nice thing about it's you're, you're saving people time, right? I log in, I see something. Oh, we have late orders that need to be shipped. I can just click. I logged in and I hit one button and now I'm ready to go do my work, right? Whatever that means for you, that's what I would say in your functional area of the business. Go ahead in and, and update your landing page to a dashboard, even if it's like, here's the approvals that I have. Another quick thing that uh, uh, we started doing in trainings when we were doing optimization for folks is we remind people that they can actually change their homepage as long as you have the user access to do so. I can actually just go into my user profile. And what I can do here is I can actually go in and just update like things like time zone. And there's also this, this screen to update your homepage. So let's say I'm someone that logs in and I wind up going into um, accounts payable bills every time I log in. Like I, I'm, I'm very directed. I log in, I go to the bills screen every day. Or I log in because every day my job is receiving POs. Well, you can just click this little magnifying glass or hit F3 and you can pick a different screen, right? It doesn't have to be a dashboard. I can literally just pick a different screen like the bill and adjustment screen in Acumatica and that would then be the screen that I see when I log in, right? Um, I, I, I'm not recommending that for everyone, but I would say I'd rather see you log in and boom, be taken right to your work than taken to a, a landing page that you're gonna wind up clicking on some things, okay? Um, so that would be way number one, personalize the user's landing page, make it a dashboard, make it a screen that's actually functional for that. Way number two to optimize your Acumatica system. This one's not, um, there's no like sizzle on this feature here, but I will tell you it's very important. And uh, your IT security person or team at your organization values this a lot. And that is cleaning up user roles, okay? User roles are, I like to think of user roles that they have a couple of different functions, everyone. Okay, number one is the user roles in the system are driving what modules you have access to, what screens in those modules you have access to, what data you have access to. Like I have access to one branch of my company versus two branches or three. And then on top of that, even on say a vendor record, it's going to restrict what data I can see on the record that I have access to, right? Acumatica's user security controls are incredibly robust, but they're very under leveraged in my opinion. And, and uh, number one is if you're gonna optimize Acumatica, it's a great time to add to that optimization project. Let's do a user security audit, right? If you're coming from a um, Sage legacy system into Acumatica, 
if you're coming from QuickBooks, which Acumatica has a lot of folks that Acumatica is their first ERP, right? They're outgrown QuickBooks and they moved to Acumatica. They, uh, they may not have this culture of like user security audits within the ERP, but I would say do this quarterly. So if you're going to have a year optimization plan, every quarter have like a, a date and you guys are going to go in and you're going to do your own little user security audit to make sure users have the least amount of access that they need, right? There's two reasons why I have this as like the number two uh, and most important or easiest low hanging fruit way to optimize Acumatica. Number one is uh, it's important to make sure people can't see data they shouldn't have access to. Like if if I am a, an AP clerk that shouldn't have access to see payroll journal entries, um, it's very important to make sure those lines are defined and also followed in Acumatica. And um, it's 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 hard, especially if like you're not the person that manages user roles to do that. So again, talk to your like sysadmin internally, talk to your partner if you need help with this. But let's just number one, make sure people have access. If not everybody needs a vendor ACH instructions, right, on the vendor record if they're there. There's like some some low hanging things that you really want to make sure are locked down so that folks can't can't um, ha they just don't have access to things they don't need. The number two reason, which I believe is equally as important, is the user security roles can really have a lot to do with a user's adoption of the system. I am in as admin right now. I am seeing a ton of stuff, which is okay because I've been using Acumatica for 10 years, right? It's easy for me to navigate around all of the, the screens and the fields, right? It's, it's a known environment for me. If I have five job functions inside of Acumatica and I have access to do 500, right, it's going to just take me a long time to get around and navigate and say, where was that thing? Right. So I'll uh, give you a great example. If you're um, if you are just let's say you're an AP user. Spend a little bit of time tailoring the roles down for your users at your company so that they are only seeing the five or seven AP screens they really need. And there's two ways that you can do that. Number one, in the user role setup of Acumatica, inside of the user security module, you can go through and you can drop screens out from certain user roles. You can make certain screens view only, right? The other way would just be helping users configure their quick menu versus their full menu and that's driven right here. So this is the payables workspace. Right now, if I hit this little configure quick menu button, I could remove, like, there's no danger, right? This is the other side of it. The one side is like user security. You shouldn't have access to that. Now it's like, hey, there's, I have access to all this AP stuff, but I don't use it every day. And like, it's kind of cluttered for me to look at it that way. So Acumatica made a very uh, cool feature several years ago that you can go in and you can say, you know, without touching the user role, let me just get rid of like, I don't need, you know, 17 aging reports. Just this, give me the, the period sensitive one, which is my personal favorite. And then I'll just hit exit. And now my quick menu is actually just going to give me those reports. So the next time the user comes in, they hit this module. Wow, AP looks so cleaned up, right? Here's the only screens that I would need to access. So uh, user security, really important thing. Because users come and users go and businesses grow and you create new roles, um, again, I would encourage you add this as a quarterly optimization task on your optimization project in Acumatica. User security audit and then any user security changes. It further personalizes the system and provides a cleaner user experience. You gain efficiencies through that. And then it also just increases user adoption in the platform. Number three, I don't know why I made this one number three, because I think it's the coolest one on the list. Uh, the other two, right, these are fairly basic things. But I thought I would just talk about one kind of neat way that I have also, for my own company, made a, an integration with Slack for approvals. Uh, one of the great things about Acumatica is that it can notify you via email, via text message, via push notification to the mobile app. 
you can do business events. And I know there are a lot of sessions about business events and GIs over the, the last two days that are super exciting and awesome features. As a, as a user, right, I don't want to get 15 additional emails a day, 30 additional emails a day as a person approving transactions. Uh, I, some of you may understand kind of how I work from an email perspective because you are the same way. Like your email inbox is your to-do list, right? I want that to be like under 10 every day or it's kind of stressful for me. 10 emails in my inbox. That means I got things to do. If it gets to like 20, 30, that's stressful. So for my personality and my work type, I, I don't want to get 15 emails about um, about all of the approvals I have to make. I'm just going to delete them and then probably forget to go do them, honestly. Uh, you, people ignore them after a while. So what, what we have at our company, we're a big Slack user. Um, you can do this same thing with Microsoft Teams. So what I wound up doing is I actually leveraged just the standard approval map in Acumatica. So if you're, if you're familiar with the approval maps and the, the uh, assignment and approval workflow, we use the standard approval. And then I even use the standard um, business event and email notification to be able to fire off when there's an approval ready, it sends it. And to be honest, it even still emails me, right? But what I did, I did took two additional steps. Um, and I really wanted to set this up using webhooks, but it was something I felt like would have taken me maybe a couple of hours because I'm not uh, fluent in API and webhook. It, I could figure it out, but it'd take me a while. And I know that there's some videos on how to do this with Teams and Acumatica. I just needed like a very quick down and dirty way to make this work. So here's what I get big guys. It's just email based. There was no coding involved in this integration with Slack that I built and have been loving since I did it. I let the emails fire out of Acumatica from the standard event and notification capability. They actually hit my inbox. And what I did inside of my inbox, which I use a tool called Front, uh, you could do the same thing inside of Gmail or Outlook, Exchange, where I created a rule inside of my email inbox where it, the system winds up forwarding any um, I just grabbed like the subject line. If it says Acumatica approval in the subject line of the email, it winds up forwarding it to a specific Slack channel. So I have a Slack channel uh, called Jeremy's Acumatica approvals, right? Inside of this Slack channel, the only thing that happens that you can set up a Slack channel with an email address. So as it receives emails, then it winds up pushing them to maybe a Slack notification. So the chain looks like this, guys. It sends it out of Acumatica to my inbox. I configured a rule in my inbox to auto archive, then forward these types of emails to Slack, right? Total email-based integration. And I get exactly the same result that I wanted, would, would have had. So this is the standard Acumatica approval. It comes over like this. Honestly, it looks just like it would have if it came via API, this is a, a cash purchase document that our admin entered in for paychecks. So I would go in, but the nice thing is these accumulate in here, right? And then I can go in and when I'm ready, just mark them complete. They just show up like messages I would need to, to resolve. So um, don't overthink integrations, right? I was able to do this with a five minute rule in my email inbox and a five minute setup inside of Slack, right? No coding, very little technical ability required, but I can tell you it saves me probably 30 minutes a week. It also makes my uh, uh, bookkeeper much happier because she doesn't have to remind me in Slack. And that's what was happening. I was ignoring the emails and then she would remind me in Slack. Now we actually uh, are all a little bit better aligned because of this very simple Slack integration we built via email. If you could even call it an integration, right? But that's the end result is the same as if we would have spent a bunch of time using the API. To do that. That's awesome, Jeremy. Uh, four minute warning. Great, thank you. So the last two here I'll get through pretty quickly. Number four, take a look at any modules that you have licensed, but you are not using. So a great way to do that is go to the enable disable feature screen in Acumatica if you have access to that and just kind of roll through all the features and see if there are any that aren't checked and turned on that you're not 
that you have access to, but you're not using, or even if it's turned on, you're like, whoa, we have warehouse management. I didn't know that. Warehouse management and Acumaticus terminology is the data collection portion of warehouse management, right? So maybe it's a good time to say, hey, we, we actually tried to implement that. There's a couple unique things about how we do WMS. And now we should go look at one of the marketplace providers for WMS, right? So it's a, it's a, like some of these things just get off to the, get set off to the side in the heat of a go live, come back, have that conversation, really understand what you need to be able to implement, what you might want to lean into further. This is a, a great just tool to be able to like, rather than poke around Acumatica, look at a full list that you have access to. Uh, definitely something that your partner can help you with as well. They, they should be able to walk you through and, help you identify maybe some of those features. The last thing that I'll say is um, I'm not going to, we don't have time in this 30 minute segment to actually run through the full mobile app and have me share my screen. Acumatica's mobile app is very clean from a user experience standpoint. So doing approvals on the go, even looking, uh, looking at certain functions, like if you're a CRM user and your salespeople are mainly using the browser, um, it could be a great time to say, hey, we're already like the app is included. It's not a separate charge from Acumatica. So it could be a great time for you to sit down and say, out of all of our teams, right? If you did what I said earlier and you actually did the the uh, user the user interviews, right? You should kind of have some feedback of, hey, the salespeople, this is their experience in Acumatica, but they feel like it's hard to connect when they're when they're out on the road visiting end clients. Well, it could be a great flag for you to say, well, we're already paying for this mobile app that comes with Acumatica. Let's just make sure the user roles can uh, can align to that and then teach them how to use the mobile app to enter leads, enter activities, access contacts to be able to make, make phone calls on the go. Um, all the CRM functionality that's available on the go in the Acumatica mobile app. Um, that's not a big project, right? Nothing that we reviewed in this list is like, uh, a full day of work even. Uh, these should be like things that you should be able to do in 30 minutes to an hour. I mean, if you want to make it more complex and get deeper, you certainly can. Um, so that those are the, the top five ways. The last thing I would say, I know we're going to run out of time in just one minute. If you use a tool, it doesn't matter which tool it is, right? You should be able to track the progress on how you're doing with optimization work. So like across the functional areas of the business, how are you actually doing? Um, are you making progress or not? And um, that will help you just kind of identify any tweaks to your optimization project that you need to make internally to keep moving those initiatives forward. So um, I know we're out of time for today. Uh, I'll hang for a minute if anyone has questions that they wanna be able to ask. Really appreciate everyone joining the AccuConnect session today. This is my third AccuConnect. Always excited to speak to this group. And um, I hope more than anything that you've learned at least one or two little things that will make your life or your Acumatica end user's life easier in Acumatica. Thanks, Jeremy. There was one question about um, what do you think the most um, often overlooked module that could be implemented but isn't? Expense management. And uh, that's where you have the mobile apps for receipts. I talked with a lot of Acumatica clients that are Excel based for um, like expense reporting, or they're still paying for Concur, Certify, some other outside system, Expensify. And and sometimes there's a reason for that. But the the number one thing that I would say that uh, it get, just has a really nice integration is the expense management, you know, through AP and getting the detailed expenses into the system. Awesome. Great job. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, everyone.